Okay, my oil paint's ready. Just need a little bit of white spirits now. The turp substitute is fine. In the past, when I've been really stuck out in the field, up in Scotland, and I've run out, I've even siphoned a little bit of petrol out of my car, petrol tank. Now, I'm only going to need, I think, these two brushes for most of it. Get them working again. Nice filberts, nylon filberts. A medium and a lovely brushes, these. Doesn't matter how well you wash them, it always seems that there's a little bit of oil or something that dries out at the end of it all. It makes them a little bit stiff, and I do like to have them nice and pliable, ready to go. Right, what I want to start on first, as I often do, is the sky, because I usually find the horizon as a mid-tone anyway, so it's a good place to work from. You see I've got a black background here that I've painted on in acrylic, because it can work oils over acrylics, but not the other way around. And I've used watercolour pencil to draw my composition out. Watercolour pencil then can be wiped off or gently um, taken off with the tissue or something if you wish. So you can easily get rid of it, to rub it out if you're wrong. And I'm going to use oil paints today. Um, we've done acrylics, we've done the watercolours, now let's look at a different way of, of working. Ala primer, fat on lean, so in other words the lean paint underneath and then the fat on top. Take some white first, always add our colour to the white, remember. And I want to really push colours, and I'm going to push broken colour a little bit as well. So I'm going to take a nice mauve today. A little bit of blue into that, rose, a little bit of purple, a little bit of ultramarine, and let's make a start. Oh, it's lovely that, but it's a little bit too light, so I want to go bluer, so I'm going to take some ultramarine into it. And we'll go a bit darker, there we are, that's a nice way to start. And I'm going to be doing broken colour, so I'm going to put on a, a coat of one colour and then gradually work over that to get a sort of vibrance going on for this um, Summer's day, and I say that in inverted commas, because we've had very little of a summer yet this year. Some nice days in between, but most of it's been pretty disgusting. So I want to be a little bit warmer at the top. Take a little bit of crimson now. And add that with my ultramarine. Go a bit bluer, a bit more warm at the top there. See the difference in that? Now I'll take that on down with a little more blue, a little cobalt this time. We need to play with some colours. So it's quite cool down the bottom edge here, right the way along my horizon line. Very rapid ways of working these because I'm using the same style that I will use when I'm outdoors as well. And where this blue comes into it, I'm going to, as you've seen me do in the past I expect, in my other films, just feather in one colour into another so we get a nice gentle blending of the two together. So we always start with our bigger brushes and we finish with the smallest ones. There's, there are exceptions to every rule. Just because I've said that doesn't mean to say that you forevermore have to now use big brushes first and small at the end. There are times when I will use small and I will uh, start off by doing some details and then paint loosely around those details so there will be exceptions to any rule you don't want to be bogged down by dogma or uh, rules and regulations if it works use it. use it if it works do it if it doesn't well so all i'm trying to do is like recipes for a cake let's give you ways that um, should work for you now sometimes working on board they can be very absorbent. This board in fact has had two coats of quite heavy primer and acrylic and isn't absorbing it so much. What I want to do now is get a slight yellowy tint, golden tint to the sky. So I'm going to come back into this now and take a little bit of yellow, some chrome yellow in fact, and we'll just start feathering in some of this chrome yellow over the surface. I want several colours going on down here so that one colour glows through another. And the original purpose of broken colour is to fool the eye. It's what the French Impressionists used. And basically, instead of mixing a colour and making, say, red and yellow orange, we use little dots of a colour, red and yellow dots, 
will fool the eye from a distance into looking like a shimmering orange. It will be an effect of light. I'm going to put more than one colour on, I can assure you. My dog just a green. I'd like it a little bit warmer up there maybe. Let's have a look. I'll slightly more greeny tint as well. Take a little bit of emerald green. These might seem very strange colours to use to you, but actually we're getting a lovely effect. And we'll put some of that green over there, look. Look at that beautiful effect we get then. Because these colours, the green is playing against the red, the purple red, the opposite in the colour circles. And it's giving us a nice glow. So where the photograph was ever so flat, I'm now trying to get the effect of light. I'm taking this a stage further than the photograph. So that's something we can do, remember. Um, if we want something to be accentuated, we don't always have to add more of it. If I want something warmer, I don't have to add more red. I could in fact add more cool, more blues around it um, to make it seem warmer. And I do like working on this dark ground. If I was working on white, it would be flashing up in front of my eyes now. I wouldn't be able to see what I was doing. I'd have to get rid of the white before I can really paint. But working with um, a black or a dark ground gives me a chance to keep colours more coherent when I'm looking at them and painting them like this. So I'll go around that horse at the moment. Just working out where's light, where's dark. Let's try and mix up some. It doesn't take an awful lot of paint. I mean, it's surprising how little I'm using. But I do like to have plenty out. I hate having to stop halfway through and put new paints onto the palette. It's a nuisance. The colour comes through this, even in the whites. So we've got some of that paint to glow through underneath. We're going to go much darker. I'm going to take some Prussian now. Add some Prussian into it, because up here it's a lot darker. Just flick in those little bits of Prussian, start giving the effects of the wave up here. Prussian blue, lovely strong blue, and very good for making darks with as well because we can use the Prussian to mix with the brown to give us almost a black. So we can mix either raw umber, burnt umber, or burnt sienna with it, and we'll get an almost black, which is very useful. Quite rapidly we can start to make the sea look like sea. Come down here. Now down here it's going to be actually quite light, um, but I'm going to put that dark in first, just to cover this green up so it glows through. Prussian now and a bit of purple. Not as dark as we can go by any means. We'll be going darker later, that's for sure. Bit of turps now, and I'll just work that blue. Prussian blue into the black, just to lose the deadness of that, the inertness of that. Um, we've got the wave coming out, and our lovely deep purple and blue wash, which we require down here as well. Let's get that in. I'll we'll paint some darks over there later. Just let it sink in. Now, the beauty of these oils is they they're much stronger in pigment than the acrylics were. But it's much nicer for me to get stronger colour on that's going to remain, that's not going to sink like the acrylics do. So the acrylics have their uses, but um, I must say that I do really still have a preference for the vibrance and richness of oils. Just let that dry back a bit, and while it's drying back, we'll work on the horse a bit here, before I go back in there with making any darker colours. Because I shall make a really dark, almost black, with the use of the Prussian and the brown. But first I just want to get an underpainting reflection going on. Let's find some of these highlights reflecting across the surface to help give us the form. Put down to a slightly smaller brush, my next one down, just to carry on with those details. And I'll make that dark I was talking about, Prussian blue. And a little burnt sienna and a little burnt umber and just look how black I can go with that. It's even blacker than the black I had on earlier. 
we were talking about that in the earlier painting of just what black is and what white is and we were saying or I was saying to you that there will never be a pure black or white where there is light because light will always um, reflect upon the black or the white to make it into a colour. So white would have a blue light from the sky to make it a very light blue or it might have the yellow light from an artificial light. These legs are going to stand out a bit more when I get the white foam behind them. I should cut into it a bit more with the lighter colours later. Right, that's the underpainting about sorted. I want to come back and just work on a little bit of silhouette. Especially on that horse. It isn't just the colours within that we're concerned with, it's the colours without. In other words, outside. So, if we get the shapes right, that and a better shape. Down here on the horse's nose needs a bit of work. I want to start painting in the undercoat of the uh, surf now, so I'm going back to my slightly larger brush, which is only slightly larger. And I'm going to use a mixture of yellow ochre and white. This time I want it slightly darker, so I'm actually starting with the yellow ochre rather than the white. If you want a light colour, start with the white and add the, the colour to it, rather than with the gallon. In this case I want it a little bit darker. So, and this has to come all the way through the waves here. I'm going to use very gestural marks, flowing over with the waves. You make the marks about the object we're painting. You can't literally copy every mark of the wave, so I'm going to make it about it. And if we're light with our touch, we'll just be able to flick this paint on top, as I was saying now, the fat over the lean. So here we're painting the fatter paint over that lean paint underneath, and letting some of that blue just show through. Plenty of paint. Don't skimp on your paint. Oil paint so beautiful, isn't it? So creamy. It's like strawberries and cream. You know, it's a lovely texture to it. Look, so to build it up in layers, and actually sculpting it now. Now, with the acrylic painting, we built up the texture first. But in this case, we're actually making the texture with the paint itself. And Monet did both. I feel the way through the tops of the surface of this uh, foam. There's some yellows and browns coming through this as well. So now I'm using the edge of the brush a little bit more. And these colours coming right up through here as well. Let's have a look now back here. We've got the wave down. If you don't want to go over slightly in places, we'll come back and touch that up afterwards. But the matter at the moment is just to get the feeling of these. Dragging the brush through the still wet paint down there. You get the streaky effect of the foam. Right, now I'm going to add some burnt sienna to the mix. We'll start to get these I'm going to add a little bit of Indian red, which is a little bit warmer, twinkling in amongst this stuff in the background, just to give a nice glow through. And that part sienna and reds are still coming back here into the background as well. Right through, reflecting, because this is sandy water that's being stirred up by the surf. So we want these sandy colours that are mixing in, glowing through. Take my small brush again, and I want to look at this bright piece of hat here. What an 
earth am I going to mix that with? Well, I'll take some magenta. Make it nice and bright. Let's just see if we can find that. But it won't just be one colour, this magenta. It will be a couple of colours to get that right. So we'll take the magenta. Try and keep it clean, add some clean, nice clean white to it. On the outside of the hat, the light is shining most. Nice clean colour. Now I'll take a bit more of the red. I'm going to go into a bit more of the cadmium red now. Bring some of that cadmium red down on the inside of it here. To show a much warmer red around there. There we go. Now a little tiny touch of the dark I made earlier, just on top here. Something small like that can make a difference. And we'll make it a bit golder. We'll go back to the yellow ochre that we used on the sea, and we'll just use a little bit of that at the back of the hair here to catch the sunlight look. And how with just a few brush strokes we can start making it. Now I'm going to take the yellow ochre and mix some of that with that pink. And let's just look at the arm now as it catches the sunlight here. Don't try and paint all the fingers, we're just going to show an impression of a hand. That's all we need to do. Now oh, some cadmium orange. I'm going to bring that cadmium orange just around the bottom of the saddle blanket here. So I'll take some of my chrome, which I'm going to add a little bit of white to because these yellows, even yellows in, in many mediums, seem to be so transparent. Okay, continuing with this smaller brush, I'm going to bring these blues up a little bit more, come back to my cobalt blue, and just drag a little cobalt over the back there of her. Just making it a little bit lighter there. Pure cobalt blue. And I'm going to put a little bit of cerulean on in a moment as well. And then we'll just give the sleeves a little bit of a touch up. A little touch of cerulean now. Just on that sleeve there. See how much lighter it is. There we are, let's give it a bit more colour, isn't it? I actually want a little bit more of that blue coming around the saddle here. A little green. We want a little green into the um, saddle cloth here and she's got some blue arm or wristbands on here which are quite nice let's just flick those in I you need to get down with a finer brush to this lady there's a few of these little bits of light in it's rather fun here now I think we can start on the, uh, the next stage which is to look back at the surf and I want to make up a cream, so a, quite a cool yellow. I'm going to use my cadmium lemon in this case, with a lot of white, just the tiniest touch of pink. And this is laying the fat over the lean then, the, the, thin over the, the thinner layer over the fatter layer of the words. Just making marks about, or similar marks to the ones that are there. We'll build up these warm, cool whites, if you like, 
Right, the colours just to show you how we can get the sparkle happening here and uh, how white is not always what you think. With all these little bits of white are actually lots and lots of different light colours to make the sparkling back there by, by the use of gestural brush strokes and movement as well as the colour we'll try and get this feeling of moving foam and sparkling water. To back over there with the darks later but at the moment just want to try and get this right. Right, then I've got to start making this something more purple, pink. There's a lot of that going on. So you really want to get this effect of the sparkle of light. You can see how that's happening. And these pinks start to make the blues glow and we get the feeling of these rippling waves as the surf comes in onto it. Through here as well. And so by the use of one colour next to another, right back into here. So we're not painting great patches of detail, I'm just putting in little marks here and there to try and capture the effects of this going on behind here. Now a little more red into the light purple and we'll see if we can just feel these colours in here a bit better. These pinks here I want just to be a little bit stronger. I want some slightly lighter blues back in there yet too. I think these colours would be there but here we are making them work eh? Now back to the Prussian with a little bit of the brown just to start tidying up things again because we lost a few little bits here. Here it's time to set the drawing there in a minute. Lost that leg a bit there. Some people can be very silly about impressionist paintings like this. You know, they're walking along in a gallery and they're looking at photographic representations close up. And they come to something like mine and they're not sure what to do. They tend to uh, stay as close to the painting as they were to the photographic representations and if literally can't see what, what they're looking at themselves, so it's just daft. And what might surprise some of you is that I haven't had to move to a very fine brush. I'm just painting the right colours in the right places in the right shapes, relevant one to another, and hopefully this jigsaw will come into place. Do you know, I reckon we're about there with that. Don't need to do too much more to that, I don't think. Right, now I just want to, uh, as I'm finishing off, put a little bit of sparkle into it, so I'll just take a little bit of pure white and we'll just add little bits of, uh, little flecks of light into this now. Just to finish it off, eh? Yeah? 